how amazing it is to have a close friendship with someone. I remember meeting my closest friend, Joseph Lopez, you probably know him, leading the worship here at Compass. And we met back in junior high, back when we were young little kids. And I remember our friendship growing over the years and how it has been such a great thing, whether it has been encouraging each other in the different successes of life, um, or it has been comforting one another when there have been down points and pains and difficult times and even asking each other for wisdom and for counsel in those tough times. I'm sure a lot of you guys have those same close friendships with different people in your life and you can see how that is such a great and important thing in your life. Well, similarly, throughout scripture, we see that a lot of characters are stated as being friends of God, such as the character Moses that we're going to be talking about today. They were friends of God, which is indicative of this close and personal relationship that they had with the God of the universe. But if I was to ask you about your relationship with God, would you be able to characterize it as this close and intimate relationship as we see with Moses? Or would you see it more as this distant relationship where it's not as close as what you would like? Similarly, if we were to ask God about your relationship with him, what would he say about it? Well, one might ask how Moses had this close and personal relationship with the Lord. And we see here in Numbers chapter 12, which I encourage you to turn to, that it gives us the answer of how Moses was able to have this close relationship. And we even see God describe that relationship with Moses. We see that in Numbers chapter 12, starting in verse 6. Go ahead and read along in your Bible as I read it out loud. Numbers chapter 12, verse 6. It says this, And he said, so God is talking here, he's talking to Moses, Miriam, and Aaron, and he says this, Hear my words. If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, make myself known to him in a vision. I speak with him in a dream. Not so with my servant Moses. So it says, if there's a prophet out there that God speaks to, he does so in a vision and a dream, but not so with Moses. There's a different way with Moses. It says, verse 7, He is faithful in all my house. With him I speak mouth to mouth, clearly and not in riddles. And he beholds the form of the Lord. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? So we see this distinction even between other prophets and Moses. With other prophets, God has spoken to them, some through dreams, some through visions. But with Moses, he speaks to him mouth to mouth. He speaks to them directly, and that's because of this close personal relationship that he has with God. And I want you guys to learn today from Moses' example that you should grow closer in your relationship with God every single day. And I trust that you know that when it comes to our relationship with God, us being right with God, that is not something that we earn. It is made clear throughout Scripture that apart from Christ, we are dead in our sins. We're dead in our transgressions, but we are made alive through Christ. So being made right with God is not something that we do or something that we uh, continually grow closer in every single day. Salvation is not done by our works, as I'm sure you guys all know. But once we are made right with Him, we start this process of sanctification and becoming more like Christ every single day. And I want us to grow closer in our relationship with God every single day. Grow closer in that intimacy. Grow closer in in the relationship that we have with God because we see Moses who had a close relationship and we should have this, the craving to do the same. So for point number one, go ahead and write down 
Crave an intimate relationship with God. Crave an intimate relationship with God. Well, how do we do that? How do we have this closer relationship with the Lord, the God of the universe? Well, one thing I would ask you to think about in your own life is, am I practicing the spiritual disciplines that God has outlined in his word? We can look at Moses and say, well, Moses was able to talk to God. Think about the, the burning bush. and Think about God giving his commands to him in the Ten Commandments or Moses getting counsel from God quite often in his life. And we can think, well, I can't do that. I can't speak directly with God. But that's not necessarily the case. We have, given, we have counsel from God in his word. Hebrews chapter 1 verses one through two talk about that. It says this, long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his word, by his son rather, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. See, back in the Old Testament, God gave his commands through prophets who were the mouthpiece of God. But in these last days, we have the benefit of having the entirety of the canon. We have come after the Messiah and we are able to see the commands given by Jesus himself and the entirety of the canon, the commands from God. But do we take advantage of that? Are we consistently practicing those spiritual disciplines such as reading the word? Are you in the word every single day? Are we fostering that relationship with God by talking to him in prayer? Are we listening to sermons on a regular basis, cultivating and growing in our knowledge of God? Are we worshiping God through our living and also through music consistently? Are we storing up God's word in our minds through memory? Are we serving the Lord, whether that's in the church or with our time and resources outside of it? Are we practicing these spiritual disciplines to crave this closer relationship with God? If you're not doing that, I'd encourage you to start doing those things today regularly. We have this new year coming up, believe it or not, but it's really close to the year 2021. And oftentimes around the new year, we set these new goals of what we want to see happen in that year. Well, why don't we make it our goal to take our Bible reading, our prayer life, our memorization of Scripture, take that to the next level? Maybe in 2021, you can make it your goal to do a deeper study of a certain book of the Bible, to go beyond just the daily Bible reading and methodically tanning through, as Partners talks about, through a book of the Bible and really going deeper into God's word. Maybe in 2021, you can make it your goal to memorize scripture more than you have in any previous year, whether that's memorizing one verse each month or a couple verses every month to get God's word stored in our minds. I fear far too many of us are just okay with where we are at in our walk with God, that we have been doing these things, maybe we've do, been doing them consistently, but we are complacent with where we are at. It makes me think about Thanksgiving, which was not too long ago, and I know when it comes close to Thanksgiving, I get this hunger and this craving knowing that there's gonna be a lot of good food at the dinner table, that there's gonna be lots of turkey, mashed potatoes, and, and gravy, and green beans, and salad, and bread, and all these great things, and I feel this craving in my stomach for that. But after we gouge out and eat a ton of food, and we're sitting on the couch, that craving seems to disappear, and for the next couple of days, it seems like I don't even want to have any Thanksgiving food at all. We have that big craving, but then it doesn't last for a long time. I think Oftentimes, that is how we treat the spiritual disciplines. We might have a short burst, a short rush of really craving to get into God's word and get into prayer, but 
once that feeling goes away, then we stop doing it altogether and we oftentimes forget about them. We must not grow tired or complacent with God and His Word. We should crave to be in His Word because it's through those commands and through the Scripture we are able to know about God, to learn about Him, and to love Him more and, and build that intimate relationship with Him. But maybe you are doing the spiritual disciplines. You're reading your Bible consistently. You're going to Him in prayer. You're storing God's Word in your mind and in your heart, but sometimes it just feels stagnant and you don't seem to be getting a whole lot from it. Well, one thing I would ask you is, are you doing the spiritual disciplines as an end in themselves or are you doing it to be able to love God better, to know Him better, and to serve Him? Maybe you've gotten to the point where you read your Bible, pray, and memorize Scripture, and, and serve regularly, but you do it just to check off the box rather than using that to know God better and to build that growing closer in that relationship with the Lord. To foster that closer relationship that we see that Moses had. Furthermore, if you're feeling distant from God, there may be some unconfessed sin that's in your life that you need to repent of. You might think of it as this small deal, but it is an enormous deal that we need to repent of our sin. It makes me think of, if you didn't know, I wear contacts. And the thing about contacts is you have to store them, at least the kind that I have, overnight in this solution. And I remember one time I did that overnight in the solution and I put it in my eyeball, but then I flicked my eye a little bit and it got stuck in the top of my eye. And it was extremely painful. It was so painful. And it seemed like it was just this small thing, just a small little contact, but it had such big consequences because it wasn't where it should be. It had a big deal. Similarly, when it comes to sin in our life, we can see it as no big deal, just this small thing. But if we don't repent of our sin, there are major consequences. And maybe that is something in your life, a sin that you haven't repented of, that is making you feel distant from God. Additionally, let me ask you this. Does every part of your life revolve around God? How much of your life do you spend talking to Him in prayer? Whatever happens in your life, are you quick to go and talk to God about it? Whether it's the joys of life, maybe you got a raise or you have a birth of a, a grandchild, these wonderful things, are you quick to praise God in prayer for those things? Or maybe it's the sorrows of life. Maybe you lose a close family member or a friend or someone that you had this close friendship with moves away and it's, it's wearing on your heart. Are you quick to go to God for comfort in prayer, talking to Him about those things? Or maybe you're in need of wisdom of how to deal with certain family drama in your life or how to confront a sin in someone else's life. Are you quick to go to the Lord in prayer. We can build this intimate relationship with God that we see that Moses had by talking to him in prayer. So we see that Moses had this close relationship, but what does God point out about him in Numbers chapter 12? Look back at Numbers 12 verse 7. Talks about the distinction between all the other prophets and Moses. And at the end of verse 7, he says this that Moses, he is faithful in all my house. Moses was faithful to obey what God had commanded and told him to do. So for point number two, go ahead and write down faithfully obey God's commands. Faithfully obey God's commands. When God gives us commands in Scripture, of what we are to do with our lives? Are we quick to come up with excuses, reasons why we aren't going to do what he told us, or are we going to faithfully 
do what he says even when it is difficult. Think about how Moses obeyed God's commands. Hebrews chapter 11 talks about it, how Moses was this man of faith and that faith led him to obey God in whatever he called him to do. Hebrews 11 talks about it in verse 24, before it talks about the, the faith of Moses' parents. But here, verse 24, by faith, Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to be mistreated with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He considered the reproach of Christ greater wealth than the treasure, treasures of Egypt, for he was looking to the reward. So rather than just remaining in Egypt with the fleeting pleasures of sin, Moses was obedient when he was faithful to God because he considered the reproach of Christ greater than the wealth in Egypt. Verse 27 of Hebrews 11 goes on. By faith, Moses left Egypt, not being afraid of the anger of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Verse 20, by faith, Moses, he kept the Passover and sprinkled the blood as God commanded them to do, so that the destroyer of the firstborn might not touch them. And then verse 29, the, the passage that we all remember, by faith, the people crossed the Red Sea as on dry land, but the Egyptians, when they attempted to do the same, were drowned. Moses was a man of faith who did what God commanded of him to do. Think in your mind of the whole entirety of Scripture and the commands that God has given to us. Are we obedient to fulfill those commands? When God commands us to serve in the church, are we obeying that command? When God gives us the greatest commandment, and to go out and make disciples of all nations, are we obeying that command to go out and to evangelize to our neighbors, to our family, to our friends, to people we don't even know? Are we obeying that command that God has given to us? Or do we come up with excuses? We can look at Moses as someone who consistently obeyed God, although he wasn't perfect. You, I'm sure you can think of many examples in Moses' life where he didn't obey God well. Think of how he killed an Egyptian man in Egypt, or when he struck the rock twice in the wilderness, when God told him to speak to the rock, and Moses struck it twice, and that was the thing that kept him out of the promised land, was that disobedience. Or even in Genesis chapter 3, when God commands Moses to go back to Egypt, but Moses comes up with all these objections to obeying God. He comes up with the objection of the people, they won't listen to me. The people, they won't know that, that I'm actually from God. And his last objection of saying, I'm not very eloquent in my speech. The people aren't going to listen to me. We see even Moses, this great man of faith who had this close relationship with God, even at points in his life, have some objections to obeying God. Well, God gets angry for that these objections by Moses and this lack of faith that he's shown. But I fear that oftentimes we give objections as well when it comes to obeying God. Think about the one we just mentioned in evangelism, sharing the gospel. We can have the same excuse as Moses in saying, God, I'm not very eloquent in my speech. There's people who are great evangelists out there. I'm not even close to them. Can I even really make a difference with my neighbor who's a hardcore atheist and doesn't want anything to do with the Bible? With my coworker who's Muslim and doesn't really believe in the Bible at all? And can I really make a difference by sharing the good news with them? I'm not eloquent in my speech. Or think about God's command to serve. Maybe you think, well, what can God do with me? I really can't make an impact on other people. These are excuses that we can come up with for why we don't want to 
obey God. But think about if we do choose to obey. Think about the impact that God can use us for his great work, for what he wants from us. Think about it. Moses was just a man who was used by God in the lives of others because of his willingness to obey God. Not perfectly, as we pointed out, but consistent obedience. Can You and I, can we do the same thing, consistently obey God's commands, being faithful to do that. But oftentimes it is our pride that gets in the way, right? It is our pride of thinking that we know better than God that we're not going to choose to obey His Word because we think we know better than He does. Rather than being prideful, we need to live humble lives. So for point number three, go ahead and write down, live humbly before God and others. Live humbly before God and others. In Numbers chapter 12, the text that we're looking at today, in verse 8, it has this interesting phrase at the end. It says, Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? God here talking to Miriam and Aaron. Why were they not afraid to speak against Moses? You might be thinking, wait, why is this added to this passage? Well, important thing to know about Numbers chapter 12 is here he is speaking to Miriam, Moses, and Aaron. And Miriam and Aaron get upset with Moses for marrying a Cushite woman. They get upset with him and they take this complaint to God. In Numbers 12 verses 2 and 3, they say this. They say, Has the Lord indeed spoken only through Moses? Has he not spoken through us also? And the Lord heard it. Now the man Moses was very meek, more than all people who were on the face of the earth. Miriam and Aaron upset with Moses for marrying this Cushite woman and this pride and jealousy and thinking, what's so special about Moses? Aren't we also like Moses? We can see the pride and the jealousy in their life. But Moses, he could have came out and said, well, look at the special relationship that I have with God. Look at all these great things that I have done in obedience to him. But Moses doesn't do that. In verse 3, we see that Moses was very meek and he lets God handle it. He lets God take care of it. As we see God give the answer in defense of Moses in the later verses that we talked about. And we see even the consequences for Miriam speaking out against Moses because of the pride and jealousy of her heart. And she becomes sick with leprosy for seven days because of this pride of thinking of herself as great. And we see Moses, rather, showing humility, being humble. Let me ask you, are you living humbly before God? You could have this growing, awesome relationship where every day you're growing closer to the Lord, more reliant upon Him, reading His Word to love Him and to know Him better, communicating, talking with Him in prayer, being obedient to evangelize and to serve, all these great things. And that can maybe cause in your mind to have this pride in your heart. Think of yourself as greater than other people, but we should never let pride manifests itself in our hearts and in our lives. Don't let that happen. Ultimately, we should be motivated to be humble and be motivated to grow closer to God, looking forward to the day when we will see God face to face. Revelation 22, verses 3 through 4, talk about that. Talking about heaven, where no longer, it says, will there be anything accursed. But the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and His servants, we will worship Him. They will see His face, and His name will be on their forehead. May our future reality of being in the presence of God encourage us to grow closer to Him every single day, growing more like Christ in our obedience to Him, living humbly before the Lord. May I encourage you to grow closer in your relationship with God every single day. We started by talking about how good it is 
a thing to have a close friendship here on this earth. But how much greater is it to have a close relationship with the God of the universe, the creator of all things? And one of my favorite hymns called What a Friend We Have in Jesus echoes that sentiment. It says this, What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. What a peace we often forfeit. What needless pain we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. May we grow closer to the Lord each day by taking everything in our lives daily to Him in prayer.